Hello and welcome back to Savvy Sprocket and please welcome this, my new to me 1993 Toyota Coaster. Now, the first question that many of you are going to have if you are US based is what is the Toyota Coaster? So the Coaster is Toyota's mini bus platform that they have been building to my knowledge uh, as far back as the 60s um, and this is a small scale city bus that is used at, in a bunch of different countries all around the world it uh, however was just never uh, imported to the states um, this particular coaster left Toyota as a newly assembled EX model in 93 and was shortly after converted to an RV by a company I believe is called Land Home. Um, I, I did some research, unfortunately I wasn't able to find anything about this company. I, I don't believe they're in business any further. Um, however, uh, they did get their hands on this one and built up quite a nice uh, RV conversion on the inside of it. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, go ahead and uh, open up the doors and show you the insides. One of the really interesting features that I like about this bus is just as you enter, there's actually an automatic door opener. Um, given this was a bus platform, you know, the driver would not uh, be able to get out of the driver's seat to open and close the door for passengers. And it was kind of a cool addition that they left in. Um, just a quick button on the dash and this door uh, opens automatically. As you enter, you have a small metal step to uh, go ahead and kick off your shoes. And then right in front of you is a small dinette area. This uh, dinette area does have a table in the center um, that sits on a post between the two benches. And this bench on the left does uh, fold out totally flat. So you could go ahead and definitely come to sleep one, maybe cram a second person in there. Um, and interestingly enough, this seat also reverses all the way around and there is seat belts on both of these. So you can uh, go ahead and have four actually additional passengers safely ride in the vehicle protected with some belt. Over to the left of the inside of the unit here, you can see is kind of the, the operator's area. Again, right-hand drive. So you have the driver's seat over on the right, and then the passenger has an awesome view with endless, um, endless windshield real estate over on the left. They even have a small window down by their feet, so they're not gonna miss any views as you're driving along. Um, bit of a compact setup because the engine is under their, um, basically right under the, uh, the seats in the center here, um, just over the front wheels. But um, you still have plenty of room once you're set in there. It just uh, makes getting in and getting out a little bit different. Over on the left, there's a small storage cabinet that was built in. After the dinette, on the rear, you have a small kitchen galley area. The uh, kitchen does have a sink, a microwave, and a refrigerator built down in there. And as I said, there used to be a propane stovetop set up there with the fan above it venting outside. However, it looks like that was removed at one point with a prior owner and just replaced with a piece of wood to give you more countertop space. Across from the kitchen area, you have two doors, first of which is actually a small shower. Let me go ahead and pop that open and uh, show you what that looks like on the inside. So it's a little bit dark in here. Let's see if we can get a little slightly extra light. There is a tinted window there. So you have a tiny little shower, small little metal uh, drain pan down at the bottom, and um, a little faucet, everything to uh, get quickly cleaned off. The second area, I believe, is kind of a small closet that has a platform for like a cassette toilet. Um, it's actually currently a little bit disassembled. Um, there was a little bit of work that had to be cleaned up in there, but you can kind of envision it's the same exact setup on the inside there. And after that, you have the sleeping quarters. Out back here is a little bit uh, kind of narrower, but wider than like a queen size bed. It's made up of these uh, six removable panels. Um, these panels are pretty sturdy, um, but they can all pop out really easily. And that uh, gives you access to the garage space underneath. Um, plenty of room to sleep with a bunch of windows. 
around the side. All those windows did come with some curtains that close up and uh, cover them just so you don't have people watching you. But uh, right above that also you have a bunch of storage cabinets all around that are give you plenty of storage for all your clothing and whatever else you're gonna bring with you. But uh, definitely quite a uh, nice comfortable space back here to sleep in at the end of the day of adventuring. The exterior of the coaster is rather original. The uh, RV conversion did not have too much of an effect on that other than as you can see at the top of the roof there, there are two max air vent fans. Uh, hanging off the side is also a collapsible awning that rolls out nicely and has some latches on the side of the body to uh, bring some legs down and keep it sturdy. In addition to this, over on the side, uh, the passenger side in front of the rear wheel is a uh, outdoor storage box. It was kind of nicely molded into the body itself and it's a steel uh, lockable box down at the bottom which uh, provides plenty of storage. Above the storage box is a couple grates. Um, the bottom grate is to vent out the refrigerator exhaust and that top vent is for a oven fan that sits above what was a propane burner on the inside. You also have a land and shore power hookup which given that this is a Japanese import um, is not it's currently wired for 120 volts. Um, the Japanese electrical standard that this was built for is actually 100 volts, 50 hertz. Um, and I'll show you on the inside, there is an electrical system that links into the 24 volt uh, vehicle system on this that kind of interconnects the two and has a bunch of batteries to uh, run your lights and all your accessories on the inside. Um, which that particular system does actually function on 120. Um, however, it's gonna require a little bit of cleanup and a little bit of rework just to confirm that it is um, up to the correct specs to handle correctly the now US-based 120 volts that I'm gonna be operating this in. On the rear of the motorhome, you have a wonderful black and white reverse camera. Um, pretty stock other than that. There's a large rear hatch that goes under the bed and down at the bottom it did include a uh, aftermarket tow hitch which is not ready to tow a ton but would be perfect to carry a couple bikes or an additional uh, storage rack off the back to bring your uh, camping supplies with you. Over on the driver's side of the vehicle because it is an import and right hand drive um, it's pretty standard other than the fresh water Water fill plug and you can also see down at the bottom there is a gray water tank system um, there's actually two tanks that are kind of linked together and you have a drain there on the bottom um, other than that though basically you have some windows cut in and it's uh, pretty clean and stock looking from the front driver's seat you have your standard uh, automatic transmission this bus has a four-speed transmission in it you know steering wheel tachometer fuel gauge everything that you need uh, to drive right up over there um, to the left that you do have your uh, HVAC control and the bus is um, has a large HVAC system actually with a uh, intake vent up in the ceiling here there's a large fan coil that uh, blows a bunch of air both uh, AC and uh, heating for the whole cabin area now unfortunately that does only function AC at least when the um, when the engine is running. However, when the engine is not running, you do still have supplementary heat from a diesel heater that's installed uh, under the uh, seat. Additional, you have you know your standard radio, and then uh, a nice uh, interesting touch from the 90s is a black and white small four inch uh, CRT, which is how you see your rear view camera. As I mentioned before, right under this hatch here is the engine. Uh, why don't I go ahead and uh, pop that open to uh, give you a closer look and see what the power plant on this thing is. So there you are. There is one large hatch and a smaller hatch that both pop open very easily to give you access to the top of the engine. The particular power plant in this bus is Toyota's 1HDT, which is a 4.2 liter six cylinder turbo diesel. Um, it is basically stock configuration and runs very well. 
Um, this uh, particular unit does have quite a decent mileage on it. Um, however, these engines are really known to be bulletproof. They were put in the uh, Land Cruisers for a number of years. Um, and uh, as anyone who's ever had this engine or a Land Cruiser knows that uh, basically with some minimal uh, maintenance, this, uh, this engine will just keep on kicking. Um, has plenty of power to move you down the road and uh, definitely has that nice uh, turbo diesel sound to it. And with that, you've pretty much seen a good quick overview of this entire RV. As you can tell, it's uh, rather compact. It's only about 19, 20 feet long in total, but it has just about all the amenities inside that you would need, given, you know, they are a little bit dated. It was built back in uh, 1993. Um, however, they're all pretty functional and decently clean. This thing is basically already ready for some adventure. And with that, why don't we uh, jump in the driver's seat and take it for a little drive. And contact. But we can't forget that the uh, rear door is open. Good thing I have this handy switch down on the dash. Now you might be thinking, does Savvy Sprocket really need another project to add to the channel? And the answer of that, of course, in reality is no. Uh, however, it's impossible to say no. Compared to all, all the other projects that I have on the channel, this one definitely needs the least amount of work. Uh, basically, out of the gate, nothing is not functional. Um, it basically just needs a little bit of cleanup and some routine maintenance. So at first I just wanted to go ahead and kind of show you this new quirky interesting rig um, that I'm going to be taking out on some adventures. Um, I'll be sure to get some content of those actual adventures to mix in with all the other uh, builds and project videos that I am going to be putting out. If you enjoyed this sneak peek on this new interesting rig, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, and I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, it's really going to help me grow and bring you the best content of projects like this and uh, more interesting stuff to come. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one.